I'm elevating the talk a little bit further. We talk about, let's recap a little bit. We talk about what is machine learning, how to build up a model, how to evaluate a model. And then from there, I talked about the difference between predictive and generative models. Now what I'm going to do is combine these two together in an experiment where I'm doing a machine learning prediction and I'm going to tap into large language models to improve my prediction and attach and make them work together. So that's the next part. So here you see those things. Experiment, I've done prep, model selection, I've gone through all this process and then did some adoption and data prep. You see this prop engineering. This is where I will connect to a large language models and I will be able to get into doing some work there. How do we do that? So in my experiment, there are two experiments with this. One is I'm going to take that same example of diabetics and tap into OpenAI and try to get some more semantic data out of it and get something. So step number one is define the problem collection. So what I'm trying to do here is identify the problem to be solved, uh, label the data set for the sentimental analysis. And for example, here I'm trying to get a review of label indication of sentiments. So next step will be to get into uh, OpenAI. So I will need to access LNM with 3.5, create an API, and then pre-process the text for your data to generate the additional contest. So this is how I did it. Now I started the process here. I jump into it. I did some NLP where I've used some stop words, get the punk whole thing. And from there did some tokenization of whatever I'm processing it. And next step will be, if you know IDF, TF transformations, I'm doing vectorization and then jumping into the model here. So now this was my experiment. I was able to, hold on. I'm able to bring all the pre-trained data set here, do an IDF uh, conversion, do a vectorized transformation, and then skin down the, the thing uh, in support vector form uh, with linear SVM, and then was able to do some prediction. Now getting into the large language model was the next step. This is pre-processing before I go. This is where I am able to now connect to open AI by using, I haven't put my keys here. And then I went to uh, this open source text divine 1.002, connected that pre-trained model, gave a 50 token and was able to combine my generated feature with the train and test and bring fit the model here again and measure the accuracy. Now, this is one way. The other way is to do the same thing is by using Langchain and Lama index. These are another frameworks which you can use. And this is very powerful frameworks which are now used uh, to connect to ChatGPT. And also you can take your own data set from outside. For example, if you are a hospital or a law firm and you have a bunch of cases, a lot of data, you can bring that data in, index it, vectorize it before you go to the large language models and, and do the experiment around that. So Langchain help us to jump and connect uh, into large language models like ChatGPT. Lemma Index also gives you an additional ability to take your external PDF or documents and then jump, convert it into different vectorized form and then jump into large language models. How do you do this? This is something called transfer learning where you do the fine tuning of model, take care of the safety mitigation and distillation process, tuning, let's skip this part a little bit. Now, I will, I'll come back to this one, but these are the steps you will see it, me doing it in next level. The next concept what we have is semantic data. Uh, semantic data is referred as data, which is not only defined by its values, but also by context and meaning goes beyond the traditional data forms by embedding the rich metadata that describes the relationship and properties of data elements. This makes the data machine readable and understandable in more human-like manner. It's very complex definition. I'll make it simple for you. If you have gone to any 
any music concert or DJ, we have been generating semantic data in many ways. Like for example, if you play a guitar and another beat next to it, uh, piano, and you mix this kind of music together, a new music term, that's a semantic data. That's what what a semantic data means. Now with AI, we are able to generate a lot of semantic data by mixing different features, inputs, and can create a new data out of it. So semantic data referred to refers to a data which is not only really defined by X value, but also by con sorry. So the way it is done is linked data, knowledge graphs, and cementing automation, automation and research. Uh, so in a very simplified way, what I explain you is take a data piece, add some semantics, smoothen an integration part of it, and you'll have a new data. These are transformers, and next possibly in the Gen AI, we'll look this into details. But I wanted to get to is uh, synthetic data generation part. So if you know a little bit about Gen AI, there are two ways a transformer work, which are called GAN models, generative and discriminative. So in GAN, models the way it works is the generator imagines some picture and creates a picture which is fake and discriminator the other neural network will try to say it's a fake and they compete with each other as long as the generator is able to beat a discriminator and a new data set is created or new image is created new music is created so this is what i'm trying to show here so generator took a noise and created something Discriminator said, no, it is not true. And they kept fighting back to and fro, competing with each other. From original, a semantic output is created, a new data set, which was very close to what the original request was. So simple way to explain this is, we took a vector of a human being, which does not exist. And we, generator kept generating different scenarios. And towards the end, it was able to beat discriminator to say that this is a human being and a new face is created which is not an existing human being but a fake human being this is how fake images are created so this is how the generator and discriminator works if you go here this person do not exist.com if you are doing some kind of experiment just put put and if you create a face some fake faces put it there but this Faces, they, they are not real human, they are semantically generated data. Now, our original topic in this discussion was how to take large language models and create some image which we have done in fashion and makeup. So this is what we did. We have a platform called Data In where we took women makeup, women faces with certain makeup and we are able to predict what makeup she needs to give the same look. And the challenge we had through this process was how many faces and how many women we can get makeup type, right? So we've been doing this since 2019 and this has now with generative AI, it has revolutionized the whole thing for us too. So what we did to improve our data set, we were able to take from one face and generate multiple faces and multiple makeup type. So how did we do it? How to generate a semantic description of a woman face with a makeup using different popular engines like hugging faces and transformer. I made it very generic, not specific to what we do, but very generic. And I've used two models inside GPT-3 and GPT-T5. So first thing is step number one, I was able to, we were able to do is we have a lot of faces, women faces with makeup already, more than 20 to 50,000 of them. So we were able to bring them, just bring them in. And from there, we were able to uh, use something called two models, T5 and uh, Ether AI, GPT and Nano uh, 2.7. So T5 is text-to-text -text transformer. It's a transformer-based language model, uh, which is built by Google. Uh, Google AI and is it does wide wide uh, transformation work on NLP tasks like text to text transformation and all those transformation which we needed. So we have to bring this because uh, we had two challenges. One is we could have done this through prompting or we could have done through non-prompting. Prompting is like 
when you have to give an input and ask us uh, bot to respond to it. Another way was how do we take an image and multiple times let it prompt itself to 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 beat the discriminator. So that's what we did here. So for that, I need to bring the Ether AI, uh, which is an open source. You can have it. So Ether AI G GPT Nano 2.7. B, what does that 2.7 B means? It has a feature size of 2.7. This model indicates the capacity of 2.7 B refer as the parameters of the model as 2.7 billion features, which, which helps you to do that. So we were able to bring this to, and this is not exactly what we did, but I'm showing you the high, high level of uh, how we were able to achieve that makeup what we, we publish here. Now, we will try to do a semantic description of the woman face by GPT-3 and E5. We use the transformation library to initiate the two, two pipelines, GPT-3 and T 5 For each model, we look through the woman faces, generate the description using common prompt, and adjust the parameters which makes the difference in the faces, like the length, the return sequence, the temperature, of, uh, of fine tuning and some more parameters. So these are some high level understanding. So we made up a function to create a face where with prompting, uh, describe up to woman face and then put it into the length description of 50, return. And then that was for uh, with T5 and then another was for the second model. GPT-3 and T5. So this is what we were able to do it. And then we were able to combine them sequentially. Uh, new faces they measured with. Now inside we use GAN, uh, deep learning technique, especially adversary models. Uh, this is more detail how we did it. So it will take a lot of time and understanding. So that was to cover what, what was the talk. Uh, it was too uh, too much for me to go through from what is machine learning to this level. I hope it gives you a, about 5,000 feet how these things are connected. It is no way designed to make it very specific to give you a detailed level. For that, you can meet our team. We are based here in Orange. That's where I sit and the another office is in Irvine. I'm in Orange right now at City Tower. You can set up an appointment with our expert. We can go through details. People on the team which is leading the, the content side and, and the workshop side, these are CDS, five masters, postdoctorate, NANNS, economics and machine learning, PhD. And I've been speaking with you for an hour, so you know my background now. These are a couple of people who have gone through our programs, very high level PhDs, uh, MBAs and fresh graduates.